Hi guys, Roxy Love here again. Give thanks. Uh, remember that Afro Kinky Curly here that I died in my last video? Well, this is the wig I made out of it. Yes. No. If y'all didn't see it, I'll put the link in the description bar so y'all can watch. Now, let's get to the point. Look at The wig is turned up. Okay? Turn up. Now, can I tell you about softness and how it looks like my hair? And I got a few questions. Oh, is that your hair? Hear me now, in my mind. I wonder if you tell them the truth. I'm saying no more. Kinda. <laughs> Anyways. But yeah, this hair is, so far, it is so nice. I really love it, you know. Um, I did sew it on a dome cap. So there were a few parts that I didn't get to film. Like the beginning, when I started the wig, I flipped the dome cap inside out and sewed a track right around so basically when the wig uh, is completed it would look more natural on um, if you want to pin it up or if the wind blows like them kind of ways it will look more natural uh, the second part is when I was closing the wig the battery died on me anyway I did now in the video you'll see me using a different technique which I usually do um, going I usually go in circles when I'm closing uh, up a curly wig but I chose to use a different technique and that's by going from side to side when I'm at the top like you know you're gonna have that um, circle that you're gonna have to close up well I start to go from side to side until I reach the um, top and then when I finish, I start parting that hair uh, that was sewn from side to side and start going from here and start going this way, you know. And that way, it, um, that creates a more full look, in my opinion, because normally the hair will be more flat on the top, but it gives it a more fluffy look, you know. And to me, it looks more realistic. How I styled it, what I did was just literally trimmed the front with a razor comb, just a little bit. I did not cut anything else from the back or I did not put any layers in it, nothing. It just falls naturally. And that's about it. Oh, and to get it more bigger, what I did was use a, uh, did I use a, a white teeth comb? I think it was a white teeth comb and just comb the roots so you know that way you'll get that volume and I use my fingers to um, comb the ends out just to you know jazz it up but yeah that's what I did and if you want to see how I achieved this look just continue to watch and don't forget to like thumbs up this video and subscribe now Hope you guys like it. Peace and love. Mwah. First, we're going to thread our needles so we could begin sewing the weave onto the door cap. So okay guys, whenever I'm starting a weave, I like to sew through the web because it makes it more secured, whether if it's on someone's head or on a cap. So I'm going to go ahead and put that needle through that loop to make a knot. Sometimes it's best to sew through the weft more than once because it tends to get loose after a while. So now I'm going to continue by sewing under the weft. Sewing under will help to minimize the shedding. Each time I'm sewing under or through the weft, I like to make knots and I do that by forming a X with the thread 
and pull that needle through to create that knot. And I do that because it helps to make the extensions stay intact. Okay, so now I'm running out of thread and I have to start on a new one. So I'm going to do the same exact thing that I did when I started the weave. Uh, sew through the weft a few times and knot that thread. After that, I'm going to cut the thread long enough though so I could be able to tie it a couple of times so it will prevent the whole thing from getting loose. Then I'm going to cut the excess amount of thread off and continue sewing. Now I'm at the part where I'm going to start on a new row. Um, I find that some people like to cut the weft at each at the end of each row, which I do not like. I do flip it and sew through the weft and under to make it more seamless. And by not cutting the weft, there will be less shedding. And I'm going to continue this technique until I finish the whole wig. Okay guys, so this is one bundle sewn in already. Uh, you could tell that this year is going to be full, which is good because you don't want to walk around with no scanty scanty head, right?
Okay, so now we're at the top and I'm on the third bundle also. Uh, normally, uh, I would go in circles, but I do use a different technique um, when I'm doing the top of my uh, wigs using curly hair. So instead of going around in circle, I'm going to go from side to side and I still won't cut the weft um, during this process. Now that I'm at the extreme top of the wig where that portion is falling to the back, I'm going to start making my way to the front to repeat the same process so I could create bangs. So this is how it looks when I'm done doing that part and the fun part is coming up just now. So now that we're done sewing the weave from left to right, now we're gonna start parting through that hair and start sewing from back to front, front to back, as if we're creating a checkerboard. So as you can see, I'm parting the hair and you can see spaces in between the tracks and that's where we're going to start sewing. And when I'm done sewing everything on the right side, I'm going to start and do the same exact thing on the left side. Thank you. 